So going audio only today, uh, as you, my mug is usually pretty disgusting to look at. I have a uh, infected tear duct in my right eye that has completely swelled slash glued it shut. So uh, in, in I'm, I'm not going to show that on the YouTube. I don't want to, that, that to, I'm ugly enough to begin with. <laughs> so we are just going to go audio only today. Maybe tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get it cleared up here. Uh, in the next couple of days or so, and you'll get back to seeing my horrendously ugly mug, and you can get that validation of your life that you are at least prettier than that guy. But it's been an interesting couple of days in the college football landscape, and there is one virtue, and, and when I first started this podcast, I, the one of the first things I talked about was it's not really in my nature to be overreactionary, super angry, uh, illogical. I mean, you could argue that it's illogical sometimes, but that's not ever the intent. I, I try to be reasonable as all get out all of the time. I, I My attempt is always to view things from every angle, look at it from a thousand foot view, tackle it that way. And that pays off from time to time. And it's one of those times right now where it the idea that a, f- a few weeks ago, I-, I guess it's been more than a few weeks ago, six weeks ago, that the world was falling at Ohio State, that there were players entering the transfer portal right and left. They had just lost to Michigan. Now they ended up losing to Missouri in a bowl game that um, even going into it, I uh, will continue to contend that those bowl games don't matter, that they are quasi worthless. Now Missouri didn't treat it that way and credit to them. They won the game, but, for a couple of weeks, it was the sky is falling. Ryan Day is this idiot who doesn't know what he's doing at Ohio State. Jim Harbaugh is running laps around him. They just lost to Michigan for the second straight year. Uh, they, they they just don't they don't have the ability to beat the Wolverines. Culture's bad. Players are transferring. They're keeping all. They're holding on to coordinators that stink, et cetera. And oh, <laughs> what, what time can change, right? Like the only thing that was going to change that perception was time or a firing eventually. And, and the idea that people in the greater college football landscape that believe that Ryan Day is somehow on the hot seat is insane to me. Ryan Day is not on the hot seat. First of all, leading up to last week, Gene Smith is in his last couple of months as the athletic director at Ohio State. You know what he's not going to do on the way out is throw the football program into upheaval. It wasn't going to happen. And now they've hired a new athletic director in Ross Bjork from Texas A&M, who the kind of last, his last gasp at that job was securing $75 million to blow out Jimbo Fisher. You know what he's not going to do It is his first Priority in his new job is fire Ryan Day. So the idea that he was ever on the hot seat, that it is even remotely warm. Does losing to Michigan suck? Yes, 100%. And the amount of people that view that as unacceptable in Columbus, inside the administration, inside the athletic department is insanely high. And Ryan Day, I assure you, is keenly aware that of the things he cannot do as the head coach of Ohio State, lose to Michigan regularly is chief among them. Okay. Like he gets it. The idea that he doesn't understand the rivalry because he's from New Hampshire. Believe me, I, if your job that paid you several million dollars a year hinged on beating that team up North, you're keenly aware of what the rivalry is, what it means, etc. I do, I, I do not and I will never buy the idea that he, he doesn't understand the rivalry because he's not from here. The guy's paycheck is depending on him understanding the rivalry. He gets it. But that was the perception a few weeks ago. Players were leaving the trans players were leaving in the transfer portal. There were questions about what the culture was inside the locker room, whether he was the right guy for the job. Why are they still holding on to these coordinators? Uh, 
why is the why is the special teams coordinator why is the quarterbacks coach still there etc there are all sorts of questions and then time happened ohio state finished the recruiting the early recruiting si- signing period really strongly they have done r- very well in the transfer portal They hired Bill O'Brien as their offensive coordinator. They fired their special teams coordinator. Basically, every gripe that Ohio State fans had about the football program, they didn't want Ryan Day to call the plays anymore. Now, my point of contention would be if you didn't want, okay, you can say, I don't want Ryan Day to call the plays anymore. But I don't think you can then say, I want Brian Hartline to be the guy to call the plays. Because that's sort of like being like, you know, I've had this doctor for a couple of years that I really enjoy, um, but the last time he operated on me, you know, he left a stitch in a weird spot, and that really stunk. So I want this guy coming out of coming out of medical school. I want that guy now. Or like, I enjoy my barber, but the last time he cut my hair, he didn't. He only rounded one of the corners on the back of my head, and not both of them. So let me get that girl who just graduated from beauty school. Well, wait, they've never done it before, and yet your idea is they're going to do it better? That's generally not how it works. Generally, it's not a, like, hey, the person who has experience, I don't want them doing it anymore. I want the new guy. I want somebody who's never done it before ever in their life. That's what's going to lead me to the promised land. Do you see how that's kind of a dumb argument? So when you hire a guy like Bill O'Brien, who is incredibly accomplished, People get skewed views of Bill O'Brien from his tenure in Houston. The coach, Bill O'Brien, was not a bad coach. The general manager, Bill O'Brien, was awful, dreadful, had no business being in that situation, and yet was thrust there, failed ultimately because he's not a player personnel director, he's not a general manager, he's a coach. And the idea that he's the reason Alabama didn't win a national championship while he was the offensive coordinator, I don't think is necessarily fair, right, etc. But when he has been a college football coach, his quarterbacks have been exceptional. He has coached them to their best seasons during their tenures. So I don't think you can discount what he has done as a college coach. If your argument is, He didn't win a national championship while working for Nick Saban. Do you understand how ridiculously high that bar is? Like, if that is your gripe, that the man hasn't won a national title, well, that's true. You know how many active college football coaches after Nick Saban retired have won a national championship? Three. And you know how many are going to still be college coaches by the end of this week, too? Uh, That's probably hedging the bets on Jim Harbaugh, but a bit too much. But Kirby Smart and Dabo. That's it. That's the list outside of Jim Harbaugh, who won one two weeks ago and might not be the head coach of his program by the end of the week. It's really hard to accomplish. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. But they're not. And I wonder why that is because it's really hard. So if that's the standard and and believe me, I understand that at Alabama, at Ohio state, at locations like that, that is the standard is winning the national championship. But if that's the biggest gripe you've got about somebody, the biggest knock you can give them is they did not win the national title. Okay. Well, that is not going to be a disqualifier for somebody to land a high profile job. What Bill O'Brien has done as a college offensive coordinator and a college head coach has been, whether you believe it or not, almost universally, objectively, pretty impressive. So you can denigrate the decision to make that higher. But, and and we've talked about this before with Michigan, where what they did was they saw the trend in college football, right? was hire an NFL offensive coordinator, whether it was a position coach, somebody who had called plays, quarterbacks, coach, whatever, drop down to the college level, become an offensive coordinator. And then you have answers for everything you face. You have that ability to get into multiple formations, 
be a little bit more diverse, et cetera. Michigan turned that and flipped it on its head and did it on the defensive side where the trend was everybody do this offensively and you've got a leg up on the competition. Michigan flipped that on its head, did it on the defensive side where they hired NFL defensive guys and did a really good job. They used it to their advantage, obviously. But bringing a offensive guy from the NFL still works. Bringing in a guy who has a ton of experience calling plays so Ryan Day can focus more on having the CEO role rather than being in the weeds calling plays is still a good decision. What Ohio State did in the transfer portal. Now the argument has been, you know, they've spent $13 million on NIL money. They're buying a team. That's the name of the game in 2024. You still have to, it's still assemble the best talent you can get your hands on. Assemble the best talent money can buy and figure it out. It has been the key for a couple of years. I think it will continue until a better NIL system comes into play. But that's where we sit right now. That's where we are. So they're playing by the rules of the game right now. So the idea that they're, you know, somehow just this horrible, awful organization like Lane Kiffin is retweeting the, oh, they've spent $13 million. You think dudes are going to Ole Miss for free? Come on now. You think dudes are choosing Ole Miss rather than Texas and Alabama and Oklahoma and Florida and LSU and Georgia? They're choosing Ole Miss first? Please. But I think the ultimate thing to think about here is that like you just got to have patience sometimes we want everything immediately Ohio State fans wanted Parker Fleming the special teams coordinator for Ohio State fired pretty much before they got on the bus to leave Michigan like just leave that guy in Ann Arbor like, okay it, that's not really how this is going to work you have to take some time to assess some things and sometimes rash decisions rash decisions are settled upon because you haven't taken the time to evaluate assess analyze and, and take a breath and think about okay what do we need because for from i don't know july through december i i imagine ryan day's got like one sole focus Damn near every waking moment of his life is how am I going to beat this team we are supposed to play on Saturday? And if you get an extra moment, how are we going to beat Michigan at the end of the year? That's it. So you don't necessarily have the chance to view everything with a thousand foot view, to view everything from all angles, to see every single thing that you need to see. So taking the time is important. And yet, as fans, we often don't want to go through the time period of analysis, evaluation, all of those things. Because we want immediate answers. We see the problems that we think are the issues, and they need rectified immediately. Sometimes immediately is not always the best decision. Sometimes immediately can be harmful. Patience is a virtue that is difficult to learn. I'm not going to pretend as if I've learned it. But I think it is important to sometimes act logically and think about things from a different perspective. And when your thought process is, why hasn't this happened? Why has there not been a firing? Why has there not been a decision on who's going to be the starting quarterback or whether Ryan Day is going to call offensive plays anymore or whatever the case may be? And this isn't just in Ohio State. This is every college program in America. The fans have this same issue. The second you think you see something that needs changed, damn it, it needs to happen now. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. Sometimes you benefit from taking a little bit of time. And I think that's an important lesson to learn too. But it's, it's crazy to me what six weeks can do. Six weeks ago, Ohio State was viewed as a program on the downturn, that Ryan Day was no longer the right guy for the job, that it was time to let him go, and it was time to start figuring out who the next person to come to Columbus was, in some fans' estimation. I will tell you, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm outside of 
those people who have done uh, who have acted immorally, unethically, whatever. I, I'm not going to call for somebody's job. Like I just don't. I have a heart, <laughs> um, and I think that it's important to recognize that, despite being paid lots of money, like Ryan Day's family is in Columbus, Ohio, and that's going to uproot families. It's going to ruin friendships. It's going to torpedo relationships and all of those things that come. Like there's a human cost to what you enjoy watching on Saturday afternoons. And I think it's easy to lose sight of that because there's a barrier. I watch this guy on the moving picture box. It sits on, above the fireplace on my on my mantle. He, he's not real. Well, they are real. There are real people. And Bill O'Brien's a real person. And uh, all these kids in the transfer portal are real people. And we lose sight of that sometimes. But sometimes the one value you need to have, the one virtue you need to have is patience. And it's crazy what six weeks can do. Because now I don't know that there's anybody. Now, six weeks ago, the question was, how in the hell is that team going to ever beat Michigan again? And now there are people saying, if Ohio State doesn't win the national championship next year, it's an utter, complete failure because they have compiled the best roster in college football. <laughs> so in that short amount of time, it went, oh, my God, they're never going to win this game to how are they going to lose? Who in the hell is going to beat them next year? And I think that's an important lesson to have and keep in the back of your mind as well. Patience. Sometimes it's okay to have it. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. I appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you are watching here on YouTube, you should be glad that you do not see my ugly mug today. We'll get the eye fixed. I mean, like it's, it's already pretty hideous to begin with. I get it. It looks like somebody tried to put out a fire with an axe. So we'll get the face all fixed up and ready to go for later this week, hopefully. But I reserve the right to keep this just audio only because I know it's already not a pretty mug to look at. But when it gets any worse, I'm doing you and the public a service by not letting you see my mug right now. So if you're listening on the podcast feed, it's just normal as usual. If you could drop us a five-star review there, I'd really appreciate it. Be back at it tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel here on Saturday Glory.